Hiya, I'm Angeline. I'm going to show you how to weechel bead an egg form. You can make this project with a real egg by blowing out the inside. Um, I've done that. It's really um, touchy because eggs are so fragile and you can do it, but I wouldn't suggest it for a beginner. So I prefer using an egg form made of foam. So the first thing we do is we take our egg form and soften the wax by rubbing it between our fingers, kind of kneading it around. And then when it's nice and warm and soft, smoothing an even layer over the entire surface of the egg. Making it no thick than half the thickness of a bead when it's laying flat down with the circle, you know, the hole facing up. The next thing is you place one bead at the absolute center of one side of your egg and then build a hexagon base shape. In this case, I chose to start with a hexagon that's flat sides face the top tip and the bottom tip flat. You'll notice if you turn a hexagon, you can get the, the pointed part facing up. This, in this case, I have the flat side facing up, as you can see in the image. From that center hexagon structure, we can build the entire mandala. At this point, I placed a piece of wax paper under the egg just to kind of, so I could lay it down on my mat and it wouldn't get the wax all over the surface. Keeps things a little bit cleaner. Also, kind of, if I hold my hand under the wax, sometimes it keeps the wax from getting on my fingers so much. And that matters because sometimes the wax can, you can spread it onto the top of the beads and, you know, make them a little gummy. So the cleaner you can keep the beads once they've been pressed in the better. The next thing is I take a length of string and wrap it around the sides of the egg so to use as a hanging string. So you can hang this up. What we're going to do with that little ribbon at the bottom is actually add some um, decorative finishes to it. So you won't that that rip white ribbon at the bottom will actually be the bottom of the of the ornament when it's finished, and this will hang from this black string. And then I'm filling in some white just to kind of make a nice even band around the edges of the design, so I can put the edging over the black string. The string won't show in the end. The bottom design, this little mandala that's at the bottom there. It fills up some open space down there and makes everything look nice. Now I'm creating a little band pattern to go around the sides of the pattern. 
and that fills in the side open space so that I can repeat the pattern on the opposite side of the egg and everything stays symmetrical. It's not totally necessary to do a side pattern like a ribbon around the side of the egg, but I like to do it because otherwise you kind of have some dead space there at the side when you turn the egg. This way the eye has a place to rest because it's a very simple pattern that runs as a band around the circumference, but it's not just dead space. There's always something interesting to look at. To keep the pattern symmetrical on the reverse side of the egg, I've wrapped a string around the middle, kind of creating an equator around the egg so that I can really measure the exact distance from the top to the middle to start the pattern on the reverse side. It's a little fussy. It took a few minutes for me to find the exact um, you know, even line because really this kind of art form, it's not super, super exact. You know, you have to do your best. So when you were, you know, when you're working with these organic forms, they don't, they're not perfectly symmetrical. So it's always just got to kind of try to do your best and make everything as geometrically symmetrical as possible in the design. So once I found the equator that's equal with the reverse side, I cut that string so that it's only as wide as the open space that needs to be beaded. Now I'm going to fold that in half so I know where the precise middle of that string is, exactly half the distance, then I know where the middle of the open space is. Just hold down that end, straighten out the string. And then place one bead at that center point. Then I'm going to put that string back over the middle so that I can make my hex my beginning hexagon pattern as a, um, a foundation pattern. Very even and symmetrical so things don't get lopsided. And I'm using that string as a guideline. Placing two, two beads on top of the line, two beads below the line, and then the two side beads under the line. Then I know everything's all lined up. And when I start to build my bandala, it'll be, it'll be even and, um, you know, turn out pretty much just like the reverse side. The beading is complete and you can be finished with this part of the project, but I prefer to seal in the project using some Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. I just 
like that, um, you know, if, once I seal it in, it becomes kind of indestructible. Otherwise, it's a very fragile art form. These beads can pop off or they can melt if they get a little too warm. Not the, they won't melt, but the wax melts if it gets a little too warm. And I feel confident when I seal in my work that it's going to last. And sometimes I mail these out and they'll withstand the shipping because they get, won't get... Um, the beads won't become displaced. So I just cover my work with a thin layer of Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. Some other people I've heard use Mod Podge Matte Finish. Um, I like the shine that Dimensional Magic adds, but that is up to you. You don't even need to do this step, like I said, if you're just doing it for your own or to give to somebody and you know that it's going to be treated very gently, you can just let the wax be its own sealant because over time it actually does harden up and also in cooler temperatures it gets really hard. So this is, again, an optional step. Once the sealant is put on, I hang this up for two to three hours or overnight and let it dry. Now the fun part. Now we get to finish up with our little flourishes and be finished. So what you'll need is some super glue and some scissors. What I'm doing is I'm taking this larger bead and using the awl to press the ribbon through both um, lengths, the, the whole loop of the ribbon through that bead and then using that bead as a stop at the bottom of the, of the egg. It just gives it a nice finish. It doesn't let the base of that ribbon show. And then I'm going to put, I push it in as far as I can. Now I'm going to put some super glue to hold that bead in place so it doesn't slide up and down the rib ribbon. Right now in this project I'm using some super glue gel which kind of works well because it doesn't run all over the place and get onto the, um, the beaded art part of the design. It's not too messy. And then I'm going to do the same with this black string. Create a bead stop at the base of that black string in just the same way. So poking those strings through a larger bead and then settling them at the base of the string at the egg and gluing it in place.
That black string is now the hanger. The top is done. Now taking that loop that's at the bottom of the ribbon, just cutting that so I'm making it into two strands. I'm going to slip a larger bead onto that ribbon and then just leave it there for a minute while I put on the feather. I put a little bit of glue at the end of the ribbon and then affix the feather to the rhythm to the ribbon. It's a little bit fussy because the glue wants to stick to my hand more than it wants to stick to the ribbon or the feather. <laughs> so it takes a minute. What I ultimately decided to do here is to kind of just hold that in place and then with some glue you know some gel glue outstanding slide that bead up over the ribbon and the and the feather and then use the bead as kind of a little clamp to hold that in place while it dries that worked out pretty well and that end is finished so doing the same with the other ribbon put a little bit of glue add the feather slide the bead up over the ribbon and the feather so that it can clamp those two in place and let them dry and voila your design is complete That top bead wanted to come loose a little bit, so I just add a little bit more glue up there just to keep it down and um, looking nice. And there it is, the finished design. You can purchase a kit from me that contains all the materials you need to make this project, including the wax, the egg form, the awl, the beads, and the string, and the pattern. That is available for purchase in my shop at angelinedoran.com. I hope you had fun with this, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.